Welcome back to another system test video. This will be system test 20 with my second fire alarm demonstration board and we will be starting with the larger system of the two where I have my EST fire shield. It is a 10 zone conventional panel. And the first pull station we will activate is this Permar branded pull station. These are originally produced by a company called Mirtone. And if you were like me and not know who Permar is, they are actually a security company that installs security systems, cameras, access control, and they also work on fire alarm systems too. And at one point in the 1980s, maybe 90s, they rebranded these Mirtone pull stations. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and pull it. Here we go. You can see zone two is an alarm. There's the inside of this pull station. And the model is 73303U. It's kind of interesting. The alarms you just heard were this Cerberus Pyrotronics MTL multi-tone horn strobe. It's currently set on high-low, and you can see it's doing audible silence. It's a fixed candela strobe, and now I'm blanking on if it's 15 candela or 110. Um, I guess it should be obvious on how bright it is, but I'm not really looking directly at the strobe. And then we have this EST Genesis horn only doing code 3. Let's move on to the next system where we have a 3 zone EST fire shield. And let's activate this STI push station. Here is a simplex true alert horn only, and it's doing continuous, obviously. And then we have a national time branded Gentex Commander 3 strobe. It has a fixed 15 Cadella strobe on it. And I will go ahead and reset this system, and then we can realarm the next. Yeah, push stations are pretty cool. They're different from, you know, normal pull stations. And that was also zone two. It's kind of a funny coincidence. I really didn't mean to do that. And that strobe was doing audible silence. And let's realarm this system with, let's do this heat detector. This is an Edwards heat detector, rate of rise and fixed temperature. Actually, before I do that, this panel is gonna start beeping because I don't have batteries. There it is. Just want to acknowledge that so we don't have to listen to the beeping. Anyways, here we go. So while that cools down, let's move to this system. And how about we activate this smoke detector? This is an ESL photoelectric smoke. And I'll be using this smoke saber smoke detector testing spray to activate it. Okay, it's been like five minutes and I've sprayed this thing way too many times. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, the wires are connected. I don't know if it has a warm-up period. I just reset the panel, which will cut power to the smoke detectors to reset them. So I don't know if it needs a warm-up time, but that's weird. We'll come back to that. How about we pull this pull station instead? And this is a CPG branded um, auto call pulse station. The model is 4050. 
They're kind of interesting pole stations, I guess. And I will reset this one so we don't have to worry about it later. There you go. And let me flip the switch. Of course the screw fell out and I just realized it flipped it on its own. I've noticed that with this pull station, sometimes that toggle switch will reset itself. Other times it won't, so I don't really know why it's a 50-50, at least for my pull station here. Maybe other people's are different. Okay, I'll leave the system in silence. Maybe this smoke detector still needs to warm up. Um, I've had it in other system tests before and it's worked fine, so I don't know why it doesn't want to work now. Let me see, was the polarity right? Surely. Yeah, it is, so that's strange. I don't know what the problem with it is. Now nah, I can't twist it on its base. There we go. Let's go back to this system for a little bit and pull this rare pull station. This is a Notifier LNG1W. It's really neat. You don't see a lot of white pull stations and it just has a cool appearance. Okay, I think we will reset this system now. By the way, I have two system sensor heat detectors. These are rate of rise, or I'm sorry, these are fixed temperature, so they are one-time activation. So I will not be activating them in this video. They're kind of just a placeholder. I want to get the fixed temperature version at some point. I just haven't really searched around for one. Let's reset this one. It's a lot like a Notifier BNG1 just plastic and dual action. Um, and now let's reset this. Uh, oh, there's the Mirtone name. That's neat. I never noticed that before. So this one's going to be awkward with one hand. I'll probably need to uh, do a jump cut. But the idea to reset one of these is putting a flathead screwdriver and prying this little bar to reset the handle back into position. And we're back. It's seriously a pain to reset this pull station one-handed. I actually did try, but it's all good. I'll reset. And let's reset the 10 zone system now. While that resets, let's attempt to get this smoke detector working. I really don't know why it doesn't want to work. Give it a generous amount. Nope, nothing. I've waited here for a minute and a half and we still have nothing. Let's see. Yep, it's connected. You can see that's zone three, which is this. So I don't know why it's not working. This is very strange. I did not think this system test would become a troubleshooting one. Let's see if I can do the magnet test just to even confirm if it's working. And now that I think about it, I don't know if this is a magnet test. I think it's a sensitivity test. Yep, I'm getting absolutely nothing. Well, that's strange. Very, very strange. Well, I think I might have made a discovery with this. There was a piece of paper or a sticker over these dip switches. And on the label, it says for the dip switches, number one, if it's on, it's 6 to 12 volts DC. And if it's off, it's 12 to 24 I don't know how well you can see that, but dip switch one is on. But with the NAX um, on the panels label, you can see it says 16.3 to 25 volts DC. So maybe that's why it's not working. Let's see if we can fix that. Okay, so I changed the dip switch and I noticed the detector is now polling, as you can see. So I'm pretty confident it's working now, but let's make sure it does work, so let's do a quick test. And look at that, it works. So that was my mistake. I guess I did not fully read the installation instructions and that should teach you when you install any alarm, if you have a fire alarm system to always read the directions. So, but good thing I was able to fix it. But it's strange, I used this detector on my other 
demo system, my first demo board, and it worked just fine. So maybe I guess the zone output is a different voltage. But anyways, let's put this back on its base and reset the system and do one final test where we will pull this last pull station on this system and we can re reactivate the smoke detector. So uh, let's do it. And I think the way we will set off both the systems is spraying smoke saber into the ESL smoke detector and then pulling this simplex pull station. By the way, I think the model is 2099-9798. We can check in a minute. But this is a break glass style pull station. I do not have any glass, so it's kind of just a neat dual action pull station with this little hammer. So we will spray this. When it sets off this system, we will pull that. So now, like I wanted to do a few minutes ago, let's activate the ESL smoke the official way, I guess. Okay, so that was both of these systems in alarm at the same time. So while this ESL smoke is airing out, let's reset the T-bar and check out the model while we are in there. It is model, oops, wrong way, 2099-9796. I think I said 98, so that's the model. This was addressable, by the way but I converted it to conventional. So there's that pull station. Let's reset this system. Boom. And uh, I do not think that's aired out. Let's make sure it's aired out. I'm just waving this piece of metal to make sure we will not get a re-alarm. Okay. That was a funny sound. Now let's reset the system. Reset, and this is beeping because there's no batteries. All right, well, that was definitely an interesting system test, the 20th test. And yeah, let me know what you thought of this one, having to troubleshoot a mistake I made with this smoke detector. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I did not expect to be doing that in this test at all. So anyways, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out some of the other system test videos I've made on my channel or even some random videos about fire safety. So that's everything, and I'll see you in the next one.